Hey guys, it's Gilbert GW Crisis. I just thought I'd share a couple of tidbits of the case study of the Australian Royal Commission. Child Sexual Abuse Data Held by the Jehovah's Witness Organization In investigating the response of the Jehovah's Witness Organization to child sexual abuse, the Royal Commission issued a summons to Watchtower, Australia, compelling production of all documents evidencing or relating to allegations or complaints of child sexual abuse involving members of the Jehovah's Witness Organization in Australia. In response to the Royal Commission's summons, Watchtower Australia produced some 5,000 documents comprising, among other things, case files relating to 1,006 alleged perpetrators of child sexual abuse dating back to 1950. The Royal Commission staff analyzed those files and produced data, which was for the most part uncontested by Watchtower Australia. 1,006 alleged perpetrators. The case file shows that since 1950, the Jehovah's Witness Organization in Australia has recorded allegations, reports, or complaints of child sexual abuse against 1,006 members of the organization. The records include admissions of child sexual abuse made by 579 members of the organization. Mr. Spinks, a senior service desk elder, told the Royal Commission that 199 of the 1,006 alleged perpetrators were not members of the Jehovah's Witness organization at the time of the first reported allegation. He later accepted that it was probably true that those 199 alleged perpetrators went on to become members of the organization and that in many cases they were the subject of subsequent allegations of child sexual abuse while they were members. The Watchtower and Orr submitted that since two... 100 persons were involved in child abuse or were the subject of an allegation prior to their becoming Jehovah's Witnesses, it would be wrong to include them as members in the total count of members of the organization against whom allegations had been made. In the light of Mr. Spink's acknowledgement above, we do not accept that the reference to members in relation to the 1,006 figures is incorrect. The debate has no merit. It is not clear to us why the Jehovah's Witness organization would maintain files relating to non-members. The simple fact is that the organization has files relating to 1,006 alleged abusers. Analysis of the Jehovah's Witness Organization files also showed that the allegations, reports, or complaints that the organization received relate to at least 1,800 alleged victims of child sexual abuse. 1,800! 579 of those against whom allegations were made confessed to having committed child sexual abuse. Of the 1,006 members against whom all Allegations of child sexual abuse were made. 108 were elders or ministerial servants at the time of the first instance of alleged abuse. 28 alleged perpetrators were appointed as elders or ministerial servants after an allegation of child sexual abuse was made against them. 401 alleged perpetrators were disfellowshipped as a result of an allegation of child sexual abuse. And 230 of those alleged perpetrators were later reinstated. Half. Of those disfellowships, 78 were disfellowshipped on more than one occasion as a result of an alleg allegation of child sexual abuse. In relation to the data, the Watchtower and Orr submitted that there was no evidence before the Royal Commission that there were 1,800 victims. Let me repeat. In relation to, that, to the data, Watchtower and Orr submitted that there was no evidence before the Royal Commission that there were 1,800 victims. The Jehovah's Witness Organization used a broad definition of reportable sexual misconduct and that that definition includes sexting. It is the right of an adult survivor of child sexual abuse to decide to report his or her abuse to the police and not that of the organization. There was no relevant legislated mandated reporting obligation in most of the jurisdictions in which the 1,006 alleged perpetrators were reported. In many cases, victims or their families did not want the secular authorities involved. A mere recitation of numbers will not help the Royal Commission. We do not find it necessary to comment on these submissions. The numbers tell their own story. Most of these matters are addressed elsewhere in this report. Mr. Toole told the Royal Commission that for approximately the last two years on behalf of the legal department, he has been responsible for receiving telephone calls from congregational elders about allegations of child sexual abuse. He estimated that over that period, he had received and continues to receive three, sometimes four, calls each month. The Watchtower Norris submitted that no inquiry was made during the public hearings as to the circumstances of the calls that Mr. O'Toole received. We note that, although the Jehovah's Witnesses organization had the opportunity to lead evidence on the circumstances of those calls during the public hearing, it did not. Mr. Toole's evidence on the frequency of the calls about child sexual abuse is consistent with the number and frequency of allegations of child sexual abuse that is shown in the files that Watchtower Australia produced 
to the Royal Commission. Although the position is not clear in relation to a few files, there is otherwise no evidence before the Royal Commission of the Jehovah's Witness Organization having reported to the police or other secular authority a single one of the 1,006 alleged perpetrators of child sexual abuse recorded in the case files by, held by Watchtower Australia. No witnesses appearing on behalf of the Jehovah's Witness Organization could identify an instance of the organization reporting an allegation of child sexual abuse to the police or other authorities. Mr. Spink said that we are not going to at any point suggest that we have telephoned the authorities or have instructed elders to do that. A letter in evidence before the Royal Commission shows that Watchtower Australia own review of the 1006 case file established that 383 alleged perpetrators had been dealt with by either police or secular authorities in the respective states or territories in which they reside. That letter did not describe or otherwise suggest that the Jehovah's Witness Organization had an active role in bringing allegations against the 383 identified perpetrators to the attention of secular authorities. Furthermore, Mr. Toole did not dispute that Watchtower Australia's review of the case files may have yielded some false positive results. That is, it is possible that some of the 383 identified case files may have contained references to, but not had the involvement of the authorities. Similarly, the case files recorded that 161 of the alleged perpetrators recorded in the files had been convicted of child sexual abuse offense. It is not possible to conclude on the basis of this data that any of those convictions came about because of reports to the authorities by Jehovah's Witness Organization. What this data does suggest is that although the Jehovah's Witnesses Organization did not report allegations against those 161 offenders to the authorities, the offenders had nonetheless come to the attention of police. There is no evidence before the Royal Commission that the Jehovah's Witness Organization either had or did not have a role or any involvement in bringing to the attention of secular authorities any complaint of child sexual abuse that was investigated by secular authorities.